The Internet, as we know it, began in 1969 as a United States Department of Defense project called ARPANET. Expanded. The National Science Foundation brought in many more universities under the Computer Science Network. These early computer networks were relatively unprotected. Systems were open and there was a high level of trust between network members. At this time, the internet was much smaller than we know it now. There were no networked home computers and these networks were solely used for researchers to collaborate with each other. Security was not built into the internet by default. By 1988, the internet has branched out internationally. Commercial email services are available. And we also have a graduate student named Robert Tappan Morris. Morris was a student at Cornell University who wanted to map out how big the internet actually was. He did this by sending out a message to every system it could communicate with, and then the systems would pass that message along to other systems. It was supposed to be an innocent project. Today, we call this kind of self-replicating virus a worm because of the way it could tunnel through a network. Worms spread on their own merits, unlike some other forms of viruses and malware that require a user to actually interact with the bad file. Although he didn't realize it at the time, Morris had made a mistake whenever writing his code, and this flaw proved to be disastrous. Morris's code did not check if a computer had already been inventoried. Thus, it would infect a computer over and over and over again. This code became so infamous, we named it. Today, we call it the Morris worm, or even the Great Worm. This was the first major worm that ever infected the internet. In fact, the Morris worm was said to cause anywhere between $100,000 and $10 million in damages. Another researcher named Clifford Stoll, who was helping to fight the worm, wrote in his book, The Cuckoo's Egg, I found that 2,000 computers were infected within 15 hours. These machines were dead in the water, useless until disinfected, and removing the virus often took two days. It's unthinkable today, but the internet actually had to be broken up into partitions to quarantine each network segment. This entire process took several days. In response to the Morris worm, DARPA, who originally funded the ARPANET, created the Computer Emergency Response Team Coordination Center, or CERT CC, to better handle outbreaks and incidents like this in the future. CERT was the first major cybersecurity organization. Morris, however, was convicted of violating the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. He was sentenced to three years probation, 400 hours of community service, and a fine of $10,500. This did not subdue Morris's passion for computers. He continued to research computer science and network architecture and is now actually a tenured professor at MIT. Things turned out okay for Morris in the end, but the design of the internet is inherently flawed. We're still using a very insecure network that is bigger than ever and full of important devices with important data, and there is no chance of us being able to segment and clean up the internet again. Worms are still very prevalent. For example, using exploits developed by and stolen from the National Security Agency, May of 2017 saw over 200,000 infections in a matter of days by the WannaCry ransomware that used the eternal blue exploit. Nearly a year later, systems are still being hit by WannaCry and its variants. For example, in March 2018, a ransomware attack took down the city of Atlanta using these same exploits. We may not be able to fix the internet as a whole, but we could still protect our own endpoints. So always stay up to date, and if you can't afford to lose something, keep it offline.